Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough, and after a bit of a break in this series, I think it is time to declare that we are slowly but steadily moving towards the endgame. In the last episode, we traveled to Rannoch to defeat yet another Reaper, and to broker a peace between the Quarians and the Geth, and with that we have secured the help of two additional powerful allies. Up next, the Asari counselor on the Citadel wishes to speak to us, you can guess why, and the Citadel is in fact also where we are going today, but for different reasons. First of all though, we will do a bit of scanning in the Hades Nexus to acquire a few more war assets and quest items. And while we do that, let me quickly talk about the plans for the rest of the series. If you want to read the different planets descriptions, then you can of course pause the video and do that. Now, I will admit it took me quite some time to figure out a good order for the remaining missions, in particular the various bits of DLC that we still have to complete. In hindsight, the one that we are tackling today could have been started a little bit earlier, probably shortly after Udina's attempted takeover of the Citadel, but I think now is a good point in the series as well, since we just completed another major milestone in the storyline and need to return to the Citadel anyway. The current plan is to finish this DLC in one go and then begin, but not finish, the Citadel DLC as well, before we begin the Asari plotline, which, without spoiling too much, starts to kind of push the game's pace a bit more, so delaying the rest of the plot for too much longer afterwards feels a little bit weird. We are, however, still pretty far away from the final point of no return and also have a few smaller side missions still left to complete, so we are not closing in on the end of the series that soon, I just wanted to provide a rough overview of how things are likely going to go from here on out. My main concern with all of this is to just find a good storyline pacing, which can admittedly be a bit tricky with the various DLC missions, as those are generally best played a little bit later in the game once we have a few levels under our belt. And yes, I know, technically speaking, DLC is not even a thing anymore in the Legendary Edition, but the more isolated, standalone nature of these missions is still very much the same, and simply completing them as soon as they become available is usually not the best approach in my opinion. Especially the Omega DLC, which we are starting today, can be quite difficult near the end, so it might be a good idea to have a few good weapons and abilities ready for it. With that being said, our scanning tour is almost completed already. So far we have collected a Prothean Sphere from the Sheol system, which we can turn into a refugee in the holding area on the Citadel, and we have also just obtained the Obelisk of Kaza, a quest item for a researcher who, you guessed it, is also located on the Citadel. My plan over the next few episodes is to collect as much of these fetch quest items as possible and then taking one final tour through the Citadel to turn them all in, that way we can hopefully limit the amount of backtracking in future episodes. And with two more Alliance frigates now also added as war assets and with our fuel reserves almost topped up again, we are now indeed done with the Hades Nexus and can plot our course for the Citadel. Now, quite some time ago, we received a message from Arya Tilok, the self-proclaimed current leader of Omega, who has taken up residence here on the Citadel and already helped us out by recruiting the mercenary gangs to our cause. Now it is time to return the favor, and knowing Arya, she probably has grand plans for us. Are you Bray? Ah, uh, the great Commander Shepard. <laughs> And me without my autograph book. Save it. Just take me to Arya. Follow me. So where is she? Shepard. Aria, how dramatic. There are too many eyes and ears in purgatory. I assume this is about retaking Omega? This is about your war, Shepard. 
Cerberus controlling the Terminus system seriously bolsters their mobility. Since taking Omega, they've spread through the galaxy. Surely the Alliance has noticed. Cut to the chase. What's your plan? Kick them out. I've amassed a fleet of Merc ships we're going to punch through enemy lines and invade. Once we're on Omega, it's a ground war. That's why I want you. I only accept the best. The leader of the Cerberus occupation is General Oleg Petrovsky. He's the one who ousted me. Don't know him. The elusive man's top military strategist and best kept secret. But all you really need to know is that he's a merciless bastard. What's your intel on the occupation? Petrovsky's army is massive and he's got Omega locked tight. The information stops there. So you're winging it? Not at all. There are secrets on Omega only I know. Secrets that will provide us a foothold. I can tell you this. Petrovsky's invasion was precise and ruthless. We'll stop at nothing to win. Alright, first dialogue choice here, and it is not a morality choice, so let us just casually mention that Arya and the General seem very much alike. Sounds familiar. Shepard, I know my reputation. I know I'm hated. I ruled Omega with an iron fist. But the people were free. Their lives were theirs. I preserved that. This man took all that away and he is going to pay. When Omega is mine again, I'll give you everything. I've got ships, mercs, Ezo, all yours for the war. What's the catch? I have objections to some of the company you keep. So you'll have to leave the Normandy and its crew behind. My crew are professionals. Let's just say... I want you all to myself. Bray will provide coordinates to my fleet. Oh, and while we're still in the Citadel, please be discreet. The fleet is hidden in this system. Signal me when you're on your way. Arya and I will meet you on the command ship. <laughs> Can't wait to see what all the fuss is about. Okay, so it looks like we are going to Omega next, but before we do, we need to prepare. Just like Arya said, we will not be able to take any squad members with us, so now might be a good time to finally give Shepard his bonus power. These are unlocked after reaching certain points in the story and talking to certain squad members, and they are all powers that our squad members also possess. The biotic powers, for example, come from Liara, Caden or Javik, and I personally don't think they fit for a soldier who never had any biotic powers for three straight games, and so we are instead going with something else. With Shepard, I think we are currently very well equipped to take down armor, but we could do better against shields and barriers, which is why we are selecting Energy Drain, which becomes available after talking to Tali right at the beginning of the Quarian story arc. And not only will this allow us to damage shields and barriers, it is also very useful against unshielded synthetics, and it can replenish our own shields, so in my opinion it is a very useful ability to have in many different situations. We are not done just yet though, one more stop will now be made in the captain's cabin, where we are finally going back to our old ways from Mass Effect 2 and bring back the good old recon hood. I think this mission in particular has just the right atmosphere for it, and the flat damage boost is in my opinion a bit more useful than the headshot damage bonus. That's all the prep work we need to do right now though, there are no more conversations to take care of at the moment, so let us now head back to the galaxy map and then rendezvous with Arya's fleet. Please note though that this marks a point of no return for this DLC. Once we start this mission, we have to see it through all the way to the end. Now, as expected, no squad selection screen this time, so we go straight to weapon selection and I think this mission calls for something with a bit more attitude. So let us test out the Executioner pistol today. Very powerful, but also only firing one single shot before needing to reload. This is basically a sniper rifle in pistol form. Still, attaching a scope is optional in my opinion, so instead we are going for the damage boost and also, very importantly, some extra ammo, as this thing runs out fairly quickly. Meanwhile, you can already see it here, it looks like Arya herself will accompany us on this mission as a squad member, so let's get her weapon loadout up to speed. 
She can bring a shotgun and an SMG to the fight, so let's equip her with the Claymore and with the very fitting Blood Pack Punisher SMG, which is admittedly going to be her main weapon, as the upgrade here gives her a power damage bonus, and Arya has a lot of those. Before we get to that, however, let us first max out Shepard's new energy drain. The first three ranks give us bonuses to damage and an already extremely fast recharge speed of barely 2 seconds, so since we can basically spam this all the time, we might as well invest in more damage, overhitting as many enemies as possible with one use. A further recharge speed upgrade is then also pretty pointless, so instead we want to increase shield restoration, and finally we are also grabbing an armor boost on top of that, so whenever we drain anyone's shields, we take reduced damage for 10 seconds afterwards. And since we saved up a lot of points, we might as well unlock the first four ranks of our frag grenade power now, since grenades can be picked up on many missions and this ability does not have a cooldown timer and is therefore only limited by the number of grenades in our inventory. Since the blast radius is already pretty good, we are going with a bit more damage and that now finally brings us to Arya. As I said, Arya has a lot of powers, most of them biotic, and so we want to max out her biotic boss passive ability first. We want to develop this ability towards maximum power damage, as Arya will be our primary caster for large parts of the DLC, and with her SMG, her weapon damage output will be limited anyway. At rank 6 then, we grab a health and shield bonus for the entire squad, most importantly for Shepard himself of course. Arya has decent survivability, but remains more of a support role. Following that, we now want to max out her Biotic Lash, an entirely new ability. It is not unlike the Biotic Pull ability that we already know, but instead of just lifting enemies into the air, it actually yanks them towards us with quite some force behind it. In doing so, the ability deals decent damage and we want to increase that a bit further, just like the cooldown speed, which is not the best for any of Arya's abilities, but this one here has the fastest, so we want to make sure she can use it as often as possible. At rank 6, we then give Arya the ability to use Lash even against enemies with shields and barriers, arguably making it the most versatile crowd control power in the game, as it is now only stopped by armored opponents. And to deal with those, we are now maxing out the already familiar Carnage ability, Arya's only tech power. Again, recharge times are not great, and with Concussive Shot and Incendiary Ammo, Shepard should already be able to take care of most armored opponents by himself, but having this available as a backup option against tougher enemies is definitely useful. With the remaining points, we will now grab the first three ranks of Flare, another new power that basically works as a biotic grenade, causing large amounts of damage in a big radius. In terms of pure damage, it is actually the most powerful biotic ability in the game, but its cooldown is also substantial, so in practice we will likely not use it too often. That leaves us with a few points to spend on Reef, a damage over time power that we already know from Javik, and that's all, let us now officially begin the Mass Effect 3 Omega DLC. We're outshipped 4 to 1, and most of our vessels are transports with limited firepower. We're not here to win a space battle, Jarl, we just have to punch through their line. So you've commandeered a Cerberus cruiser. The guest of honor has arrived. We can finally start. Let me guess. You're planning on infiltrating the enemy fleet. Exactly. We position ourselves to strike a crippling blow, then my forces join the fun. And indeed, that does sound a bit risky, no need to play around it. With Arya, you never know when things get crazy, and Shepard is very much the voice of reason in this relationship, so let's follow that path for two Paragon points. A lot could go wrong. The assault's been planned for weeks, Shepard. For now, just sit back. Let me steer. Not the best start to our partnership, Arya. How things begin isn't nearly as important as how they end. Gray, move through the relay. Signal the fleet to wait. They only follow on my command. Head for the command ship. Cruiser, I don't have you on the flight plan. Identify yourself. This is Captain Lentz. Run voice recognition. Alpha Tango Z. We took damage. Seeking repairs. 
Identity confirmed, Captain. Hold for approach authorization. How did you get the Captain to say that? The hard way. That's right. Nice and slow. Be patient. Get as close as you can. Fire! Signal the fleet through the relay. We're through. Head straight for the station. We're being hailed by the General. Should be interesting. Put him through. Arya, I knew this had to be you. You'll never make it. Call it off now. You're barking up the wrong tree, General. But maybe you can convince my partner. Commander Shepard, I've heard great things about you. And well, we haven't really heard much at all about him, but what we do know does not really paint the General in the most favorable light, so we might as well make him aware of that, just in case, and to grab two more Paragon points. My partner here doesn't have much to say for you. She's not used to being defeated. It clouds her judgment. A pity you left, Cerberus. We all sabotage ourselves in nefarious ways. Perhaps deep down you fear success. And Arya clearly thinks seeing you will unsettle me. Now it's my turn. I see you've gone to the trouble of augmenting that ship with Solaris armoring. An exorbitant waste. I've made improvements to Omega's outer defenses. My cannons will cut through you at will. He sounds pretty confident. Yeah, he does. So again, I say turn back. Let's see what you've got, Oleg. End transmission. That went well. Set preset course. We're ramming the station. Everyone brace for impact. What? Omega's kinetic barrier will stop my ships from landing. I equipped this cruiser with disruptors to take it out on impact. Don't worry. We'll probably survive the crash. System's failing. We can make it. Aria, don't be stupid. Sound the evac. Damn it. Program escape pods for the station. Let's go. Everyone out. There's no time. Guess that asshole really did upgrade Omega's outer defenses. So it would seem. The other escape pods made it. All right, what's our target? Need to hit the defense system station. Shut down Omega's outer defenses so my ships can land. If we don't, they'll be blown to bits like we were. Got it. This is what I brought you for. Ground assault. In combat, what you say goes. And those are very much surprising words coming out of Arya's mouth. Sounds like we have earned ourselves a bit of respect and can follow that up with the final two Paragon points of this opening sequence. Arya relinquishing command? I'll believe it when I see it. 
I can be a team player, Commander. I know where we need to go, and you can get us there. Okay, let's move. I'm back, fuckers. Alright, now here we go, and we immediately start things off against a good number of Cerberus Assault Troopers. As you can see, our Executioner Pistol is able to deal with them rather swiftly though. One hit is enough to dispatch a trooper, no headshot needed. That is actually more stopping power than some of the lower tier sniper rifles in the game, and I think it also becomes clear why I consider a scope to be optional for this pistol. The weapon is very accurate, and aiming down the sights is usually enough if you just need to hit your enemy anywhere, and are not concerned with going precisely for their heads. Thanks to our new bonus power energy drain, we also have a much easier time with the shielded centurions, despite not having a dedicated tech specialist with overload in our squad. The fact that we are only carrying a pistol then also makes our powers cool down incredibly fast, and so energy drain and concussive shot can be used very frequently. And so, all in all, this is a nice little fight to get us started, but it shouldn't present any real challenge at this stage in the game. Our pod took out the main exit. Use the controls to lower the blast door. Now, before we do that, we want to look around the area for some ammunition, as the ammo capacity of the Executioner pistol is somewhat limited, and we also want to grab the two medkits lying around. Over here, Shepard. Aria to fleet. You alive out there? Barely. Holding our own with the Cerberus fleet, but Omega's defenses are shredding us. Keep my army intact, Gerald. That is your only job. More enemies than approach behind the blast door, but again, so far nothing too dramatic. Tell your boss I'm coming for him. The Guardians can actually be targeted with Arya's Lash ability to briefly stagger them. That gives us an opening to hit them, and again, one shot is enough to get the kill. With only three enemies, this is a quick area to clear, but we don't want to rush to the exit just yet. Right in front of it, next to the docked fighter here, we can salvage some tools for credits and obtain another assault rifle upgrade. Afterwards, we can then step into the elevator and continue our way onwards. Ground team, report in. Bray, you there? Affirmative. Only six pods made it. Various entry points. Rally them to you, then head for the rendezvous hangar. Start prepping for our ships to land. Let's hustle. Every minute, more of my ships get obliterated out there. Alright, slightly confusing layout here, but there is only one way forward. On it, we stumble upon a computer console telling us that three sectors have been shut down due to power fluctuations, and that might come into play later on. For now, we have ran into the next group of enemies, this time also containing engineers, and therefore most likely some turrets as well, if we are not quick enough to prevent it. As you can see though, cover is abundantly available in this area, so getting shot should be at least somewhat avoidable. Of course, that goes both ways, and therefore the room might take a few moments longer to clear. Getting close. Those cannons have to be stopped. And yes, at the moment our main priority is to allow the rest of Arya's fleet to safely approach, but that doesn't mean that we cannot take a few seconds to collect some ammunition and another medkit. This way. Access denied. Environmental hazard detected. The next area needs to be repressurized. Initiating. And while Arya now takes care of that, we need to hold off the next wave of hostiles. Intruders located. Stop the gear. However, Arya is actually not out of this fight entirely. She just spends the first few seconds at the terminal. Feels good to let me. Afterwards, she is available again, and with that, all of her useful powers as well. Tell your boss I'm coming for him. Speaking of which, despite her wide array of abilities, I found myself going back to her lash again and again, simply because the ability to use it against shielded enemies is so incredibly useful, and the cooldown of her other powers is just a tad too long for my taste. All in all though, the first few fights of the mission do not depend too heavily on Arya's involvement, at least if you tackle the DLC at a sufficiently high enough level, which we more than have at this point. Repressurization complete. Access enabled. 
That's done it. One of our pods. We were lucky. Press on. Lost two more transports. Can't keep up evasive maneuvers much longer. We're right outside the defense station. Hold tight! And there we are, just a few more enemies stand in our way and then we can finally shut down the turrets. That is of course only going to be the beginning of our quest to retake the station, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything when I tell you that we will likely need two more episodes after this one to complete it. The DLC has a pretty good pacing though, with some downtime sections in between that work as natural cutoff points, so it's not going to be all combat for two and a half hours. It is, by the way, also the only Mass Effect 3 DLC where our squad members are completely irrelevant, which is probably why it lends itself pretty nicely to being played a bit earlier in the game. Like I said, in hindsight we could have played it right after Cerberus' attack on the Citadel without missing anything, that would have also avoided the small DLC backlog that we now have going on, with three fully fledged expansions still waiting to be completed, but I don't think that that's going to be a big problem. Clear. Get to the controls. In any case, we have now leveled up and grabbed two more medkits. Time to deactivate the turrets. Jarl, defenses are down. Signal the surviving ships to converge on the rendezvous point. Aye. Approach trajectories plotted. We're already queuing up. Bray, come in. Status. Rendezvous site secured. Hangar doors enabled. We'll have them open soon. Need them open now. My birds are coming in. Prep for reception. What exactly is this rendezvous point? That's where we're headed. It's a bunker I established on D-Deck for my more sensitive operations. It's utterly impenetrable with its own secret hangar and dock. Independent power source, life support munitions. You'll see. Deploy to D-Deck. Investigate and await further instructions. There's a good chance the General knows where we're going. Then no time for sightseeing. Bray, stay sharp. You might get visitors. Terrific. Take the far exit. I've locked down the way we came. Alright, so it looks like Arya has yet another ace up her sleeve with a secret bunker on Omega. The only issue right now might be getting there in one piece, especially after revealing that info to the General. Looks like the other pod teams are causing trouble. Good. Alert, alert. Defense system station compromised. Outer defense is down, unrecoverable. Armed response initiative D-752. We're causing a stir. Good. Now, next room and once again some enemies ahead of us, but only a few this time. The main challenge stems from their rather sudden appearance, but if you know what's waiting for you, this area should once again not be too difficult to clear. Feels good to let loose. Before we leave, let's grab the contents of a wall safe here, which can be a little tempting to open right as you enter the room, but of course that would only distract from the enemies, so it's better to take care of those first. The Omega Skyline. Now I feel like I'm back. It's strange. What are those things in the distance? Some kind of force field. That's not good. And no, it very much isn't, but let's stay focused here, grab some more loot, and then interact with the control screen over here. Please remain within your assigned civilian containment area at all times. some of my men. And that means we should probably help them out. Failure to comply with the generous regulations will result in penalties. 
In the background, we'll hear a few more lines from the Cerberus VI. You can also trigger them all individually by repeatedly turning the control screen on and off again, but I hope you can forgive that we are not doing that. Essentially, it all comes down to a pretty serious lockdown that Cerberus has put on the station, with civilians being strictly contained in confined areas and weapons no longer allowed for anyone except Cerberus personnel. We're getting close to the rendezvous. Let's move. Around the corner here then, yet another medkit, and the area also has a few shield generators in it that can boost the shields of us and our enemies. I know that symbol. Looks like a gang tag. The Talons. They used to deface my property too. symbol again. Hmm. Could be evidence of a resistance. Might be useful. And yes indeed, that could be something to work with. For now though, let's salvage a few more credits and keep moving. One of my soldiers by the force field. What the hell is he doing? Alright, looks like we now have some mechs to deal with, and this is where our anti-armor capabilities can really shine. Those mechs are coming through the force field. Stand still, you piece of shit. As you can see, these mechs can no longer be killed with just a single shot, even with incendiary ammo equipped, but that ammo power in combination with concussive shot and Arya's carnage ability still works very nicely against them. The mechs themselves are definitely close combat specialists, equipped with a shotgun and an omniblade for melee attacks. Bastards are fast. They can also move much faster than the standard Loki mech that we already know, and defensively they can activate an energy shield for a few seconds to protect them against long range fire. Need to check out that force field. So all in all, these mechs should not be taken lightly, but if we combine our powers to their full potential, then this encounter is still very much Poor winnable. Idiot. Something tells me these force fields are going to be a problem. Are we blocked? Not this time. Come here. Right. Looks like Arya once again has a solution to our problem. Let's see where she leads us. This way. Okay. Lights off inside of this shop, but some equipment is still there, as well as another medkit. What are you doing? Letting you in on a secret. Down the ladder. Who's there? Show yourself. Spirits, look who's back. Arya Talok. Nyrene, what the hell are you doing here? Playing cat and mouse, mostly. Just trying to stay alive. If it wasn't for these tunnels. My tunnels. I'm sure glad I showed them to you. If you hadn't, I'd be dead or locked up by now. Alright, we've met a new face and while the situation is still tense, let us not antagonize Arya and instead grab the next two Paragon points. Arya doesn't trust easily. I guess you're a good friend. I don't know. Are we, Arya? Shepard, this is Nyrene Kandros, ex-Turian military. We go way back. I've got a lot of questions, but they'll have to wait. Follow us, we'll get you to safety. I'll do my best. 
And again, no need to be cocky here. After all, she could indeed be a huge help. So two more Paragon points it is with the dialogue option at the top. Ready to put that gun to good use? You have no idea how ready. So why are you back, Arya? To reclaim what's mine. Left something behind, I take it. Not something. Everything. Okay, so we have obtained a new squad member, and before we level them up, let's use the points we obtained earlier to grab the fifth rank of Shepard's frag grenade, which will increase our grenade capacity by two. Following that, we are now looking at Nyrene, a Turian huntress with a nice mix of tech and biotic abilities. As always, her passive class skill will be maxed out first, with the first ranks offering a nice boost to health, shields and power damage. Weapon damage, meanwhile, can only be upgraded at rank 4 and we will do that. Nyrene will never achieve the durability of, let's say, Rex or James, so let's instead make her hit as hard as she can. At rank 5 then, we prioritize tech over biotic powers, as Overload and Incinerate are in my opinion a bit more useful than her biotics. And at rank 6, we will go for the squad power bonus, as this also boosts the damage of Arya and Shepard, a bit more useful than only going for Nyrene, who has fairly long cooldown times on all of her powers. Speaking of which, Incinerate is up next and we already know this one, and we are following the same path that we already took to upgrade it with Edie, larger blast radius, faster cooldown time and increased damage against armored opponents. In my opinion, that is the go-to path for this ability, which as you can see still has a cooldown time of almost 11 seconds. The same will be true for Overload, which we definitely want to grab as well against those numerous shielded Cerberus enemies. And again, we follow a somewhat familiar path here with Chain Overload, Recharge Speed and then the Shield Damage upgrade at rank 6, just because we now have an anti-shield power on Shepard as well and no longer need to hit as many enemies as possible with this one. Biotic Protector then is an interesting one, it is basically an invulnerability bubble for Nyrene, but it also prevents her from moving, shooting or using any powers, so it is purely a means of survival or perhaps distracting enemies. In my opinion, not really worth maxing out, so let's instead spend a few more points on Lift Grenade. Same logic here as with Shepard earlier, grenades can be picked up at various points during the mission, so we might as well unlock the ability to actually use them, especially if we don't waste our ability cooldown for it. And there we go, that is Nyrene leveled up for now, now we can grab one more rank of Flare with Aria and upgrade the ability's impact radius. Sooner or later we will use it, so let's ensure that we hit as many enemies as possible. Now, after quickly setting up our new hotkeys, we can find some salvage in the corner here and also grab the N7 Valkyrie Assault Rifle. This is a highly accurate burst fire weapon with good damage outputs and we will in fact equip it immediately. Don't worry, we can upgrade it in just a second. Attack. What's the fleet status? Still landing inside the bunker. Keep the enemy out. Lock it down. Now. Lower blast doors. Lower the blast doors. Alright, convenient weapon banjo right around the corner and we now want to get rid of our pistol and slap a few attachments onto the Valkyrie. Again, the scope is optional but this time we are attaching it as well as the obligatory damage bonus. Nyrene also comes with assault rifle and pistols, so let's keep things consistent. Let's give her the Valkyrie as well, including the same attachments. And let's also give her the Executioner pistol with the power damage upgrade, so that her overload and incinerate hit a little bit harder. And no, I don't know why the game gets noticeably darker during this workbench screen. As far as I know, this seems to be an issue only for the DLC though. Now before we encounter the next group of enemies, let's make sure that we reactivate our incendiary ammo and then start moving through the tunnels here towards the ladder waiting for us on the other side. Great! Why aren't the cannons online? Something's jamming them. Trying to identify. We'll flank the enemy. Get them off you. Okay, so we have made it to Arya's bunker, at least almost, because between us and the safety of those walls, we still have a sizable group of hostiles, this time consisting of both Cerberus troops and rampant mechs, not to mention the heavy Atlas mech in the background. From what we've heard earlier, the bunker is supposed to have some defensive cannons, but apparently those are currently blocked from coming online, and it is unlikely that we can do anything about that until we have thinned out the enemy numbers somewhat. 
Once again, our energy drain ability can help with that, not only to strip the shields off of the Cerberus Centurions, but also to severely damage the armor of the mechs, although that does not replenish our own shields. I'm back. We'll find him. Incoming! Now, after quickly relocating to grab two more med kits, we now need to take out a single Cerberus Engineer. An easy task once we have spotted them, even though there are of course many other enemies also still in the area. Got him. At this point, we now need to reactivate the cannons manually, but before we do that, let's grab the last med kit in the area. Right, now we could try to clear out some more enemies to get to the cannon controls, but apart from the heavy mech, the Cerberus troops will continue to spawn indefinitely, and we don't get any experience points for killing them, so we don't need to make this fight any longer than necessary. Instead, let's wait until we see a short break in the enemy fire and then rush straight for the controls, interacting with them ends the fight immediately. General's forces at bay for a while. Let's get inside. Bunker team, retract the bridge and lower the blast door. We're coming in. Lock it down. Arya, I know this place is built like a fortress, but is it safe now that the General's clued in? And I would say, considering what we just went through, Nyrene is right to be concerned, so let's support her in that to obtain two more Paragon points. Yeah, I feel like a sitting duck here. I have no intention of sitting around, and you both should know I assume nothing. And on that front, Nyrene, you left Omega fairly angry with me. I wasn't aware you'd returned. Explain yourself. The truth is I never left. The fact I went to great lengths to keep from you. I'm not easily duped. Well done. But why? I just couldn't leave. Considering all this, I wish I had. Well... You always said I'd be the death of you. Our concern does not only cover the safety of the bunker though, perhaps we should also not be too quick to trust Nyrene, and voicing that gives us two renegade points, which in Arya's presence are probably inevitable sooner or later. How do we know she isn't working for Cerberus? You're way off there. I know from personal experience that there isn't a corruptible bone in Nyrene's body. Commander, the Cerberus occupation is an illegal action. They need to be swept off this station. Talk is cheap. I welcome the scrutiny, Commander. Don't worry, Nyrene. I know you're no threat to us. Your combat skills seem a little rusty, but you're still a good shot. See my duty, officer. Bray. Keep an eye on her. Will do. 
All right, Shepard, we need to move fast. I'm itching for revenge. And again, we will go with the renegade choice here. No need to tell Arya how to retake her station. I think we said goodbye to the cautious approach as soon as we signed on for this mission. You'll do what you need to do. And here I thought you might come here trying to change me. Once up and running, this bunker will provide recon and secret access to much of the station. I'd appreciate it if you would quickly eyeball operations, see that things are setting up smoothly. What will you be doing? Checking in on my forces. I need to know how many survived the assault before I can plan the attack. It won't take long. Join me at the command console when you're ready. Alright, and there we are with the first chapter of the Omega DLC behind us. Now that we have made it into Arya's more or less safe bunker, we have at least a few moments to catch our breath and to perhaps talk to a few more people. All in all, a good point to make the cut for today. In the next episode, we will then continue right where we left off, and until then, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.